Grim Yo! What's going on, everybody? Showing up the king here, and I'm here to bring you my review slash recap for Bleach Manga Chapter 518. Before I get started, I just want to say uh, the big three were on fire this week. Even, you know, like I said, you guys all know I don't really uh, review One Piece. I do, I do follow it. I do read it and watch the anime, but I just don't, you know, review the actual manga because I just find it very, very slow. Uh, this this chapter of One Piece was actually fantastic. I hadn't, I hadn't seen the chapter this good from One Piece since the introduction of the Yeti Cool Brothers. Now, again, that's just my opinion. Don't you know? Don't start spamming me with One Piece hate. I just you know I'm complimenting you guys. So. Stay off my goddamn back. So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, but I'm not here to talk about One Piece. I'm here to talk about uh, Bleach. And uh, you know, Bleach right now is my favorite manga. It's uh, doing fantastic. And uh, again, let's jump into this review. Um, this chapter starts off with again the uh, the uh, Zero Squad is getting ready to take off and head back to the Spirit Palace. And um, we get a call in from Urahara. And um, Uruhara is basically just phoning in to tell everybody, hey, we're okay over here in Waco Mundo. You know, they're broadcasting through Cone. And um, that's why we find out why Cone is back. It wasn't just an arbitrary cameo he did. He actually did have a purpose. And he was basically beaming the signal through his eyeballs or through the back of his head. I couldn't remember. I think it was through the back of his head. And the buttons to control the view was through his eyes. Because, you know, they... Uh, try to control it, ended up trying to control it later on. But basically, Urahara was just, you know, trying to relay the message to Ichigo that, hey, we're fine. No need for you to worry about us or try to retrieve us or anything. We're good. Now, the one thing that came out of that conversation was there was a figure in the background. Now, you guys know, I mentioned this in a couple of videos now, that the shadowy figure that destroyed uh, the, uh, the member of um, Buckbeard's group it looks a lot like Grimjaw. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm not going to speculate on anybody else other than it being Grimjaw. Um, the reason why I say that is, is that uh, Grimjaw was one of the Espada uh, where he had very short sleeves. And you can clearly see when the arm was out there, the sleeves are all rolled up. Again, it's Grimjaw. It has to be Grimjaw. And it looks like Udahara has made a deal with him. So that's why, I guess, how he's going to come over to the good side. I guess, apparently, they uh, made some sort of con some sort of deal we don't know what the details of this deal is going to be, but it looks like it might be very interesting. And it does look like, you know, uh, Grimjow is going to definitely have that animosity towards Ichigo, which I cannot wait for. I just want to see those two get into it again. It's going to be awesome. Uh, also, you know, uh, it basically, you know, in the end of the day, Urahara was like, look, you know, don't worry about us. You know, do what you have to do. Do what you want to do we're fine. You know, Chad and Onihime, they came in and they chimed in themselves. One thing, though, and this actually kind of made me mad, uh, Chad, after the, you know, transmission ended, you know, Chad, you know, turned to um, Urahara and said something along the lines of, do you really think it's a good idea to tell uh, Kurosaki that he can do whatever he wants? You know, he might just decide to run from this battle. And, you know, of course, Urahara immediately looked at him and was like, you know, why would you say something like that that you don't even believe? Or something with the translation to something to that effect. And it actually kind of pissed me off. I'm like, Chad, what the fuck are you, what the hell are you thinking? I'm like, when is when is Ichigo ever run from a fight? Never. He's never doubted himself. Whenever he had a friend in need, he's been there. So for him to even come out of his mouth and say some shit like that made no sense to me. And it just pissed me off a little bit. I was just like, I was just as shocked as Urahara was. I was like, the hell kind of dumbass random question was that? Just man, shut the hell up before you get smacked. All right, so anyway, so we go back to the uh, Soul Society, and it looks like Ichigo is, you know, still talking to Zero Squad. And he's like, all right, cool, let's go. Um, can you guys fix my sword? And of course, you know, the leader of the Zero Squad says, no, there's no way you can ever repair your sword. But what we can do is we can take you to the spirit place. There's a special Riatsu, pure Riatsu, or something that's not found anywhere else. And with that, you can you can forge your sword into something else. So uh, again, this is just more hinting that once he gets to the spirit palace, he's gonna find out more about his Quincy abilities, and he's probably gonna have some sort of Zanpakuto bow and arrow combo mix or something like that. 
I think it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm just hoping and praying that, you know, it's still more Zanpak Toe than anything. Because, again, just seeing you go with a sword is just so awesome. Or if you can get both a sword and a bow, why not? Now comes the most shocking part of the chapter, in my opinion. Uh, there is, um, you know, the Zero Squad decides they're ready to leave. They're walking away. And they actually um, we end up getting back to uh, Kinka Kinkaku. That's the, I can't remember her name. But, yeah, I think it was like Kinkaku or uh, the uh, lady with the huge, um, enormous breast that, you know, we all know and love. Uh, you know, she was in the uh, Soul Society arc. You know, way, 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 way back at the beginning of Bleach. And she's the one that helped Ichigo and the crew get into Soul Society in the first place. Apparently, she's the reason that they can travel between, you know, Soul Society and the Spirit Palace. She has uses her same cannon to shoot them back and forth. And, of course, you know, when Ichigo met back up with her, one of the first things he asked about was about her brother, um... Ginku, Ginku, that's his name. I had to think about it, y'all. Sorry, I looked like I had a little pause moment, but I did. But you know, I just had to remember his name. I think it was a Gingo or whatever, Ginju or Ginju. That's what it was. So of course, you know, she was like, "No, I turned him into a statue," which was obviously a lie. So of course, you know, Ichigo shoots off to the Spirit Palace, and uh, Ginju shows up, and you know, the shock comes. The team execution is there in Soul Society. And it only looks like it's only three of them. It looks like it is uh, Genjo, uh, Tukishima, and it, and I couldn't picture the third guy. I thought it was the butler guy that got sliced in half by Kempachi, if I'm not mistaken, because it looks like he was walking all proper with his hands behind his his hands behind his back. So I'm I'm assuming that's who that one was. And uh, we and and again, um, my explanation for that is simple. I think once they died in the real world they went to spirit world and then you know they probably got some sort of special treatment to train as long as they decided to fight for soul society and i think that's what they decided to do um it looks like to me that the whole premise of this great war is going to be everyone training and getting their strength back and then coming back and teaming up to go against the uh the quincy's because uh, apparently this is going to be probably one hell of a battle it's going to be stretched out over a long period of time so it looks like the pieces are starting to fall into place overall i thought this chapter was fantastic um the fact that they brought in the execution group again was fantastic i thought that was a nice little twist it'll be interesting to see where they take that i don't want them to really have a really huge impact on the actual battle but it's good to see them back and play some sort of a small role even if it's minor again it's a fantastic scene starting to see the little materialization of grim Jow. Um, I, I really want them to stop, you know, playing games. Don't just go ahead and uh, show him already. Um, it's, it's driving me crazy. Uh, but again, you know how this works. I want to hear what you guys thought about the chapter. Are you guys psyched to know that that was Grimjaw? Are you ready to have him revealed? I want you to comment in the section below. And of course, thumbs up the video if you could. And definitely subscribe to my videos. This is showing up the King of One and Only. And you guys have a fantastic day.